In this video, we are going to talk about force. Let's call it F. And the change in length, let's call it delta L. And we're also going to talk about stress. So we're going to compare the force and change in length to stress, sigma, and strain. Strain epsilon. So let's say we have a bar of material that's approximately has a square cross sectional area. So the cross sectional area is A and it has an original length of L naught. So let's draw a graph of the change in length versus the force applied. So initially the length is the original length and there is no change in length and there is no force applied so we have a point here. Let's say we apply a force of F1 and the change in length is delta L1. So we have not a point here. Let's say we apply double the force F2 and we get double the change in length delta L2. So we get another point here. So, so if we get double the change in length for double the force applied then this is a linear elastic material and we'll get, get a straight uh, force versus length or change in length curve and the slope of this uh, curve F divided by delta L will be the equivalent spring constant of this bar. So now uh, let's look at what's happening to the stress versus strain. So we'll plot the strain on the x-axis and the stress on the y-axis. And initially the stress and strain are both zero. And let's say we apply a force of F1. So the stress is sigma 1 is equals to F1 divided by A. And the second stress we apply is sigma 2. So there's no point here. And similarly, the strain is epsilon 1 and epsilon 2. So we get this again, this linear elastic curve of stress versus strain. And the slope of this curve will be the elastic modulus E. So what's different from this curve and this curve is that this curve will depend on the particular dimensions of the bar. So if you use a longer bar, then the changes in length will be different. If you do use a shorter bar, it will be different. And if you use a bar of a different cross-sectional area, this will be different. While this one, stress and strain, is intrinsic to the material. So effectively what you're doing is removing the geometry from the um, assessment of material properties. So let's say if you have a tendon of 2 centimeters length and 1 millimeter in diameter and you have another piece of tendon that is let's say 1 centimeter in diameter and 5 centimeters in length, then these two, if you put it in a machine and measure the force versus displacement, they'll have completely different results. But if they're made of a very similar material, then their elastic modulus or the stress versus strain curve will come out to be very, very similar. And so if you measure uh, one, you can predict the properties of the other, even though the geometry can be completely different. 